Welcome back. One of the holiest of places for Christians in Jerusalem is the Church of Sepulchre. It has been preserved over years and currently the custodians of the keys to the holy place where Jesus was crucified and buried are two Muslim families that open the place daily at 5 a.m. but thousands of Christian faithfuls who make religious pilgrimages and close it at 7 p.m. in a ceremony also considered holy. Now, Jerusalem attracts about 6 million tourists yearly as both Christians and Muslims trace their journey of faith. Well, Kennedy Moravi was in Israel and now takes us through the journey of the places in Israel considered the holiest in the world. Yes. A drive into the old city of Jerusalem presents you with the uniqueness of architecture that dates back to biblical times. Preserved for what has become one of the biggest tourist attractions to date. The city of Jerusalem carries with it the history of the Bible as archaeological discoveries bring to life the ancient times that tell of Jesus and those that preceded him. Our first stop is the city of David. From here, there is a vantage point where one would see at least a bigger portion of the city. According to our tour guide, we were standing on David's palace or what it used to be. The city of David is one of Jerusalem's biggest tourist attractions and has had presidents and prime ministers as visitors. We are even told the Pope was here at one time. We are taken through what used to be the palace with explanations of what has been remade now. King David from here, together with his soldiers and close confidence will see everything that was happening in the city all the way to Mount Olives. Contrary to what most people believe, the places mentioned in the Bible as captured by our various tour guides were not far apart. Well, if you want to understand Jerusalem, you still need to walk around with the Bible, at least in the back of your mind. The names of the places here go back to these stories. If you open the Bible in chapter 22, God tells Abraham to take his son Isaac and sacrifice him upon one of the hills in the land of Moria. Where is that place? Here. Where? There. Somewhere. <laughs> so, somewhere. A lot of people tell me it's up this hill. Oh, okay. But we're in the land of Moria. That's Mount of Olives. You see all these white stones yeah. over there? That's tombs. That's the oldest Jewish cemetery, which is still in use. Okay. Jews wanted to be buried there because it's like the front row in the show of the day to come. Right? The, we believe the Messiah will come in through there, the resurrection. In Christianity, Jesus fulfills that by entering the city from the east. That's why there's lots of churches there also. That was the border of the city. Going down to a biblical valley down here called the Kidron Valley. If you look underneath the houses over there, you can see burial caves. Some of them date back to the first temple period. So important are these pieces of history preserved in Jerusalem that the relationship between Israel and the United States of America is partly based on the biblical history here. A plaque signifying the bond between the two nations is erected in the city of David to cement the relations between the two nations. In this city, there is ongoing archaeological excavations as more pieces are dug up to complete the story of the beginning of religion as we know it. Later on, when David built his house somewhere on this hill, his son Solomon built the first temple up there. So the first temple of Solomon, the inner room of the temple is the Holy of Holies. And that is where the belief of the foundation stone where later on the ark is located. Our trip to Israel was during winter and thus it meant that by 5 p.m. darkness was already setting in. We will then be taken to what is considered the holiest of places, that is the Temple Mount. One of the most visited places here is the Western Wall. This place attracts Christians, Muslims and the Jews. They come here with different prayer items, believing God lives there and listens more to prayers at this place. Towards the south is the Al-Aqsa Mosque, 
which also attracts millions of pilgrims and is one of the world's holiest sites for Muslims. <laughs> At the Western Wall, there are those who camp here for prayers. I had longed to touch the wall as I had had so many stories of blessings to anyone who goes there. Just like everyone else who goes to the wall, I took pieces of paper and headed straight to the wall, and once there, I wrote my petitions to God, some involving the great country that is Kenya. It is advised that as you walk to the wall, you wear a keeper, and that is the small hat worn by Jews. I said my prayers at the wall, and believe it or not, I felt a huge burden fall off my shoulders, and probably it is my faith. Many world leaders have visited the Western Wall, or the Wailing Wall as is named by the Jews, including U.S. Presidents Barack Obama and Donald Trump. Former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta and Azimio One Kenya leader Raila Odinga have also been to the Wall. The Western Wall is the closest to the place where the Holy of the Holiest used to be, the stone of foundation where the sacrificial of Isaac almost took place. So actually the Western Wall is the closest to the place that is the holiest for the Jews and Christians uh, around the Temple Mount. It was some minutes to 6 p.m. when we visited the wall. And what was also interesting is the fact that security officers would make time to go for prayer at the wall before setting out on the evening's duty, that of making sure the people of Israel are secure. Then, there are Jews who camp there all day praying and worshipping. How many people are really coming to visit the Western Wall a year? It can get to 6 million easily. Okay, 4 million from outside and at least 2 from inside Israel. We were told so holy is the Temple Mount that despite the unrest that is there between the Israeli and the Palestines, there is a day they meet and pray together. The day it is believed is when Abraham wanted to sacrifice his son. Christians and Jews believe it was Isaac, while the Muslims believe it was Ishmael. People, many times when I ask them where did uh, Abraham sacrifice Isaac, or was it not, where was he tested, they tell me up there. But the truth is, there's no GPS. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we know? How do we know? Tradition. Tradition? Tradition. The Jewish tradition in this case points the story of the binding of Isaac to the peak of this hill. Our next stop in the religious pilgrimage is the Church of Sepulchre, which carries great importance to the Christian faithful. But as you head there, you notice the numerous church paraphernalia on sale, sometimes not cheap to tourists. But if you are a Kenyan, your bargaining skills may help. This great piece was going for one million shillings, and to entice you, if you do not have ready cash, they offer to ship it to you. Yes, sir. Are you taking dollar? I take everything. When we are going to enter, you will see the big stone in front of you. This is also known as Golgotha, where Jesus was crucified together with two thieves. Here, the history is very well documented on the walls, and a big cross has been erected at the top of the church, which is a mountain. A big sculpture of Mary, the mother of Jesus, is also erected. This is the place where Jesus was crucified. Very next by, very close to the place of the crucifixion, is the place of the burial. The place of the burial was donated to Jesus from Joseph the Aramatia because in that time, until today, we still not allowed to carry a body of a dead person in Jerusalem till after Shabbat is finished. So they had to hurry up and to bury Jesus as fast as possible. And they buried him in the tomb of Joseph the Aramatia. But get this. This is a very sacred place for Christians world over, but the keys are in the custody of someone else from a different religion. The two families, Muslim families, are still in charge for opening early morning at 5 in the morning and to close at 7 o'clock in the evening. The church, 
very holy place for the Christians, and the keys are owned by Muslim families. But why? How did that? Why? Because it started from the time of Salah Adin, when the Muslims were controlling Israel, and since then till today, still the same two families, and it goes from one generation to another. It means we are brothers and sisters. Exactly. The government of Israel has invested heavily in preserving the city of Jerusalem, which apart from being a religious site, is a big income generator. Kennedy Moredi, NTV in Jerusalem, Israel.